Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to show you one of the single most important tools to use with Django that every Django website should have. And that's the uh, Django Debug Toolbar. So it's pretty easy. Um, you just want to pull up your shell to install it. We're going to use pip install. And I have a virtual environment set up here that I want to install this into. Uh, it's not required, but anytime you have a sophisticated Django project, you probably want to have a self-contained environment. And that's what... Um, virtual environment does for you. So if you've never seen how to actually get into a virtual environment after you have it installed and you create a virtual environment, um, you just have to go into it. Like in my case, I name my virtual environment franchise environment and then I go into bin and then just say source activate and then if you see your virtual environment in parentheses over here, it means that you are into it. So Let's go ahead and um, go into our project, our Django project, and we're going to do a pip install, and it's uh, Django Debug Toolbar. Okay. So now we're going to go into the settings file of our project, and under Installed Apps, we want to go ahead and add the new project that we just installed, and it's going to be called Debug Toolbar. We need to add uh, middleware for this thing to work, and it needs to go after the session middleware which will be right here it's important because I'm going to show you in just a second the debug toolbar typically works by um, excluding IPs that you put in there um, so it doesn't show the toolbar to anybody that visits your site because you don't want other people to visit uh, and see the toolbar that's just for your debugging purposes so in order to limit that thing um, normally you can just put your IP in there which will allow it to go through um, in my case, I have a public-facing server with a proxy server that's actually listening on port 80 and redirecting traffic to Apache on port, uh, some other port I don't remember. But um, So I have this reverse proxy, so actually adding my IP address from home to be able to debug this thing in a, in a production environment, it uh, doesn't work. So the workaround is to go all the way to the bottom of your settings file and add this. And this is why it was important that we put um, the middleware after the session because we're going to be requesting the request object from the session. And if that doesn't exist, then you have problems. In my case, I'm going to be detecting a specific username. I'm going to allow the toolbar to go through if that username exists. And this is for another project, so I need to actually update to the right project. So. You just need to copy this exact code if you want it to work uh, that way. So if you want to limit the Django debug toolbar um, to just a specific user. Okay, so that is what you do. All right, so I went ahead and I restarted my server. So now I also need to run... Um, so I need to run... Um, Python managers.py syncdb. I actually have an unrelated error message that's showing up there. It's actually um, not a big deal, but don't, don't pay any attention to that. Finally, the last step to make this work, you're going to have to run Python managers.py collect static, and you just say yes. And it's going to copy over a bunch of files and stuff um, that it uses, that Django Toolbar uses uh, in order to work. So if we go ahead and we refresh this page. You can now see that the um, Django toolbar, toolbar is on the right hand side so when I'm making uh, queries and things, let's go ahead and just pull one of these up. You can see um, how many static files are obtained, what the template is, um, what's cached, how many signals, logging, SQL queries which is really important. Um, so let's like look at one of these real quick. So you can see two queried in 7.9 seconds Let's look at a, a bigger one here, like the zip actually queries a bunch of stuff. Wow, that joker's slow. Yeah, this thing's slow as dog crap inside the admin. 
Man, look at that. Yeah, for some reason, Zip City took a crap load amount of time. Normally, it doesn't take that long. Uh, at least I haven't noticed it. So that's very interesting to me. That obviously means that um, that's that's probably a problem. But then again, it's on the debug mode and. Yeah. But anyway, this is why it's such a good tool, because now I can go in and be like, why the hell is that taking so long? I know it doesn't take that long when I just query the RESTful service, but um, there's probably something to do. Uh, I mean, there's like 43,000 records in there, so it shouldn't take that long. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. But anyway, that's one of the reasons why this tool is so important, like I said at the beginning of the video, because it gives you a lot of insight. Uh, and, and really, the SQL queries is really helpful, because um, you can see where the bottlenecks are occurring. Um other than that, I mean that that is uh, about it. And you can see also that if I log out of my site and let me refresh, the Django toolbar is not there. So normally this would show up under any page in the site, like this page would normally show the toolbar if I was logged in, and it doesn't. But I just log back in. I'll refresh it. This thing's going to think for a second, and then you can see the toolbar is back. And the reason why is because of the, what we added to the settings file. So if you have any sort of complicated setup like I do with a reverse proxy and the IP exclusion doesn't work, then uh, that is a workaround that will fix the problem for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.